This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, a bomb threat caused a Dexter school to shut down for the day. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the latest on that investigation. A bomb threat at Ridgeview Community School in Dexter Thursday morning forced 560 pre-K through 8th grade students and 123 staff members to evacuate the premises. At about 9.45 this morning, um, we were contacted by our local Dexter authorities that there had been a bomb threat um, sent in on the VA crisis hotline and it specifically stated bombs in the Ridgeview Community School. Dexter Police and the Maine State Police K-9 unit were called to the scene to search the building but did not find anything. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives and the FBI were called in to assist. Students and staff members were evacuated to Dexter Regional High School. The kids were reunited with their families and sent home for the day, while teachers came back at the end of the day to collect their belongings before heading home. Superintendent Kevin Jordan credits the school's preparedness for this unfortunate situation. We have these uh, emergency plans that are, in today's world, are, are pretty well uh, planned. And so we, we put that into play and evacuated the building as quickly as we could. Locals were shocked that something like this would happen in their community. It was an appalling situation. I'm shocked. This is a safe community. It's not something that I would anticipate would happen. Superintendent Jordan says the school will be open tomorrow with a heavy police presence. He also mentioned that there will be an ongoing investigation into the matter. In Dexter, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7, and Fox 22 News. A crash on the interstate left, or this morning left one person pinned for more than an hour before he could be rescued. Maine Department of Public Safety spokesperson Shannon Moss says at about 6 a.m., 59-year-old Nelson Castrol of Homestead, Florida, was driving his tractor trailer near mile marker 164 in Etna. That's when the vehicle left the roadway, which caused the tractor trailer to overturn onto the left median. Moss says Castrol was partially ejected and pinned for about an hour and a half before fire and EMS crews could get him out of the vehicle. According to Moss, he was taken to the hospital with what appear to be non-life-threatening injuries. The cause of that crash under investigation. Police are still investigating a death at a residence in Fairfield. On Tuesday, Fairfield police discovered a body at a mobile home on 254 Main Street. Our crew was on scene Wednesday night and observed police units from multiple departments, including Main State Police Major Crimes Unit and the Main State Police Mobile Crime Lab. Today, a representative from the local VFW hall, which has security cameras pointing toward the residence, says Main State Police confiscated their footage from the time of the incident. Neighbors that we spoke with say they were shocked by this and that the extended police presence that also lasted for more than 27 hours. We reached out to the Department of Public Safety for more information and have yet to receive a response, but we will continue to follow the story and provide any updates as we get them. Senator Angus King has introduced new gun control legislation that would restrict certain firearms and make some gun modifications illegal. Our David Ledford breaks down the bill and what it could mean for gun owners. Senator Angus King has proposed a bill to regulate the sale, transfer, and manufacturing of certain semi-automatic weapons. The announcement comes roughly one month after the Lewiston mass shooting in late October. The Gas-Operated Semi-Automatic Firearm Exclusion, or GoSafe Act, would limit large-capacity ammunition-feeding devices to hold no more than 10 rounds and require gas-powered semi-automatic firearms to have fixed magazines. King says the bill won't hinder Americans who own guns for self-defense hunting or visiting the shooting range. We're not talking about taking anybody's gun away. We're not talking about uh, severely limiting the traditional culture of, of gun use. We're talking about restricting the lethality of weapons that are designed more for killing people than doing pretty much anything else. The legislation would also outlaw gun conversion devices like bump stocks and Glock switches, which allow guns to fire rapidly. King introduced the bill with his colleague, New Mexico Senator Martin Heinrich, who says the bill focuses on preventing gunmen from quickly reloading during a shooting incident. AR-15s or assault rifles, the, the weapons in a number of mass shootings, aren't dangerous because of how they look. They're dangerous because they use expanding gas to simultaneously fire one round and reload the next round into the chamber 
while staying on target. A number of weapons would be exempt from the bill, as shown on your screen, including bolt-action rifles, semi-automatic shotguns, and more. We spoke with Maine Military Supply General Manager Mike Vignali, who prepared and read on camera a statement in response to the legislation. Any laws proposed or enacted to control guns don't prevent crime with guns. They only allow control of people who want to be law-abiding. The only way to help stop violence is to strengthen access to mental health resources and allow current systems to access those records to function effectively. The bill would also create a voluntary buyback program, which would allow those who already own guns that would be banned under the bill to get paid for turning them in. To learn more about the Go Safe Act, visit our website at foxbangor.com. In Bangor, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. A legislative commission is seeking to help Maine veterans who were exposed to toxic chemicals get coverage and care from the VA. Specifically, that commission is studying health problems potentially stemming from exposure to Agent Orange and other toxic chemicals used by the U.S. and Canadian militaries. That exposure took place during military training exercises at Canadian Forces Base Gagetown in the 1960s. Previously, the VA has denied claims for veterans' benefits and disabilities that resulted from Agent Orange exposure at Gagetown because the Reserve and National Guard units were not in Vietnam at the time of exposure. Let's be honest, for the veterans around here, um, the VA has some great people that work there and provide care for our veterans the way they do, but the bureaucracy of what that organization is um, is why we need the congressional delegation. Yeah. To, to do this in some of the in some of the um, lawsuits and in the other ways because that bureaucracy is not going to move on its own without yeah. groups like this. So the commission's final report on their findings and legislative recommendations is due by or are due by December 15th. That report will be presented to the Veterans and Legal Affairs Committee when the new session begins in January. A new affordable senior housing complex is open in a former Fairfield sanatorium. Bateman, Par Bateman Partners LLC developed that project. According to company president David Bateman, tenants began moving into their units last month. He says COVID and construction material shortages delayed the, that project, causing it to take twice as long as anticipated. We were really happy <clears throat> last month to be able to open the doors. And in fact, we're a little over 75% occupied already which really gets to the heart of how drastic the need is um, for that type of housing. I just wish we could do more units. Um, this was only a 28 unit project, but um, again, I, I think it's you know more in line with every little bit helps. Of those 28 units, Bateman says half of them are one bedrooms, the other half are two bedroom units. Tenants also have access to a laundry room and a common room. Bateman says the project costs a total of $9 million, which was primarily funded by grants, the Maine State Housing Authority, and private investments. The Lincolnville Ferry Terminal is getting a $7.1 million upgrade. That money coming from the U.S. Department of Transportation's Ferry Service for Rural Communities Grant Program. Constructed in 1959, the Lincolnville Ferry Terminal connects an estimated 180,000 passengers to and from Islesboro every year. The funding will help modernize the ferry terminal to better meet current and future demands, including servicing a new plug-in hybrid ferry. And looking outdoors now, uh, things feeling chilly, but not as bad as yesterday. And for a look ahead at what's to come, we'll turn things over to Conrad Sapinski with a first check of our forecast. Thank you so much. Our first weather is brought to you by Saliba's Rug Cleaners, Maine's largest rug cleaning destination for over 70 years. Now, speaking of 70s, a record high, not quite in the 70s. We had a record high of 60 degrees in 1963. And look at our average high, 30, well, 40 degrees. Yesterday, though, we saw temperatures around 30, so much cooler out there just 24 hours ago. Today, not too bad. We did hit 40 degrees, so we were right on point for our average high this time of year. Some low 40s right by the coast. Of course, some cooler weather up north. We're looking at Greenville into the Millinocket area. Some mid-30s made a return. Overall, though, we did see some partly cloudy skies. Definitely some peaks of sunshine earlier in the day. Now, overnight tonight, we will continue to see cooler temperatures, but still not too bad. We're going to be hovering pretty much near freezing overnight. 
Alrighty, Conrad, thank you. And still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, Maine's outdoor recreation economy is valued at more than $3 billion. Our Doug Banks was at the Maine Outdoor Economy Summit to learn more. And our Devin Dagnalt brings us a one-month checkup on Maine's sports betting legalization. We'll have those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 comes right back. Luna Family Auto Sales is a locally owned business run by a husband and wife team. Here at Luna Family Auto Sales, we combine our passion for cars with providing service to the community and local economy. Featuring no dock or hidden fees at all, we offer financing for all credit types and service everything we sell. Check out our website at lunafamilyautosales.com. Or come in and say hi, we'd love to meet you and introduce ourselves. Luna Family Auto Sales, 649 Stillwater Ave, Old Town. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Black Friday deals are happening now at the Furniture Gallery. Gather your family for a holiday meal with this five-piece dining set, only $3.99. Looking for more family room seating? How about recliners starting at $2.99 and sofas just $3.99? Update your guest room with an Ashley Queen five-piece bedroom set for $8.99. And don't forget the mattress starting at just $2.99. My family is here to provide you with the best value for your money on brands like these. The Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Windham. The Rotary Club of Bangor's Festival of Lights Parade, Saturday, December 2nd. Welcome back. Maine's outdoor recreation economy accounts for $3.3 billion, or nearly 4% of the state's total GDP, which is one of the highest percentages in the entire country. More than 30 Maine businesses made their way to the Samoset Resort in Rockport to network and share insights into everything the great outdoors of Maine has to offer. Our Doug Banks was there and has the story. <laughs> Day two of a three-day summit brought together people from different businesses and backgrounds with a collective vision in mind. To connect with one another, for people to meet one another, learn, share ideas. Breakout presentations feature topics like how intelligent is AI, from retail to rescue, inclusive recreation in Maine, and embracing recreation-based economies. We are leading um, project management and fundraising efforts for the Skowhegan River Park. I think Maine has this great opportunity to become an outdoor recreation destination, and our rural communities are really going to be able to benefit from that. The summit gives people within Maine's growing outdoor recreation economy a chance to share their unique perspectives. It's good to kind of hear uh, how people are, are working through today's economy and, um, you know, across those broad groups. For Life Flight, making those connections means a safer Maine for all. To make sure more people who come to Maine understand what it's like to be outside in Maine, right? The best rescue that happens is the one that doesn't happen. Although the doors will close on this year's summit, Maine's outdoor economy has no signs of closing its doors anytime soon. People will think about Colorado and Utah and some of these western states as being outdoor, um, outdoor states, but we have a huge industry here in the state of Maine, and it's something to be really proud of and something for us to be investing in further. In Rockport, 
Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Earlier this month, the state of Maine officially launched online sports betting, and one expert says it's generating an impressive amount of revenue already. Our Devin Dagnall tells us more. On November 3rd, Maine joined the ranks of some of the other states across the country allowing sports betting, and so far, the gamble for Maine is paying off. In less than a month, the state has amassed over $450,000 in tax revenue from sports betting, and it's not expected to slow down. There's been projections anywhere between 3.8 and 6.9 million, but with the numbers that we're seeing so far in the first 25 days, it looks like we'll, we'll come in around 6.6 .6 million. That tax revenue is distributed to various programs like the General Fund, and programs to help problem gamblers, which is important. Since sports betting is easily accessible, there have been concerns about problem gambling and gambling addictions. These concerns aren't baseless. According to Milton Champion, the executive director of the Gambling Control Unit, many other states noticed a drastic increase in problem gambling when they first legalized sports betting, but that doesn't seem to be the case for Maine. Pretty much nationwide, there was a 40% increase in calls to, to problem gambling centers, uh, but we're not seeing that here in Maine. Just because everything is going well doesn't mean the Gambling Control Unit isn't keeping a close watch on the situation. One of the more interesting tools the unit uses is a map of Maine that shows real-time bets taking place. This is an app that, that we use for geolocation and basically each, one, each time you see a pin come down, it's, it's someone attempting or someone making a wager in the state of Maine. The tool allows the unit to keep a close eye on the state while keeping track of suspicious activity. On some days, you can't even read the cities on the map. Champion says he and his unit are expecting a huge increase in sports betting as we get closer to the Super Bowl, so we'll check back in in a few weeks. In Augusta, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. All right, and still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, a chef from Milo will soon be on his way to the White House. We'll have more on, his, on, this, on that story. And in sports, it's a big night for Maine women's basketball. They're taking on 17th-ranked Indiana down in Portland. We'll have that story right after the break. Finding the right health insurance can be, well, stressful. Between feeling invisible in the eyes of big corporations and wondering if you can afford the coverage you need, it can make even your best days feel uneasy. But when you join Community Health Options, you have real Mainers in your corner, people who know how hard it is out there and put your needs over their profits, giving you the freedom to focus on what truly matters in life, people over profits. Now that's a novel idea. Enroll today at healthoptions.org. Football fans, with a Caesars Sportsbook app, you can be in the game all the time. Seeking instant action? Quick Picks offers you the most popular games and markets already built for you and ready to bet. Experience the thrill when you stack your bets to create a super parlay. Build bets for your favorite teams and players across multiple games. This season, don't just watch the game. Download Caesars Sportsbook and experience the game like never before. Whenever Maine Wood Floors wants to know the weather, they log on to foxbangor.com. Whether you're searching to add beauty with a new hardwood floor or need to restore your old one, Maine Wood Floors is your hardwood flooring expert in Midcoast, Maine. My name is Pam Crowley. In one year, I had to take care of burial or cremation arrangements for four family members, including my husband and my sister. I could not have gotten through everything without my funeral director, Cindy, at Bragdon Kelly Funeral Homes. Cindy greeted us as a friend. During her arrangement, she was so personable. Cindy is so patient and understanding. She gave us assurance, comfort, and she has such a great smile. The best thing that Cindy did is take such good care of my husband. He had some issues before his death. I felt very worried that he would not look right. When I saw him, he looked like my husband. Cindy took excellent care of him. Seeing him definitely helped me feel right. Cindy did more than I ever expected of a funeral director. Bragdon Kelly Funeral Homes, let our family serve yours. Main House Home Furnishings and Gifts has all you need to trim the hearth and set the table with our fantastic 40% off sale on home goods and unfinished furniture. Come to this family business, Main House on the corner of Route 15 and 16 in Abbott now. 
Tonight Sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We'll start on the basketball court. It's a big night tonight for Maine women's hoops. They tip off in just about a half an hour at the Cross Insurance Arena against Maine's own Mackenzie Holmes and the Indiana Hoosiers. Indiana comes in at 17th in the nation. They're Maine's highest ranked opponent since they traveled to NC State in November of 2019. The venue is expected to be sold out. It actually is going to be sold out, which is huge for the Black Bears, although many of those fans will probably be friends and family of Holmes. Mackenzie, the Gorham High grad, was the Gatorade Player of the Year her senior year and her school's all-time leader in points, rebounds, and blocks, and now is a National Player of the Year candidate in Indiana. Here's what head coach Amy Vashon had to say about what they need to do to pull off the upset. Indiana is a great team. Um, you know, you have inside and out. You know, they can shoot the three. Obviously, with um, Mackenzie down low, she's she's very very good. So um, we need to be able to defend them as much as we can and really take advantage offensively. You know, um, move the ball, move uh, player movement is going to be important, and just making them play defense. All right, that tips off at 7. We'll have all those highlights later tonight. Let's talk some Patriots now. The news coming out yesterday that Bailey Zappi is preparing to be the starter this week and should be the one under center when the Pats host the Chargers on Sunday. Reports are that Zappi fielded most of the first team reps at practice on Wednesday with not Mac Jones, but Malik Cunningham behind him as the backup. Mac was running the scout team offense for the Pats. It's been a tough year, tough year three for Jones, the former first round pick now third on the depth chart seemingly, but New England hoping Zappi can provide some kind of spark to that offense. Here's what he had to say in the locker room ahead of the start. Nothing set in stone. Um, you know, I'm just taking it day by day, treating every rep that I get in practice like it's a game rep and just preparing like I do every other week. feel good about it. Um, I felt good about it for, you know, since back in training camp. So, I mean, me and Coach OB, we're, we get along well. So, um, you know, I'm always picking his brain. All right, should be a good one there. Now to some news from Husson Athletics on Thursday. The university releasing a statement regarding an infraction issued by the NCAA that stems from a self-reported violation from their swimming and diving program. The school says that last December, the program's coaching staff reported that their former head coach had allowed a student to participate in workouts while clocked in as a team manager. So the student was paid for time not working. The NCAA investigated the incident and additional penalties for the coach were not issued. However, the Division Three Committee on Infractions is issuing a public reprimand and censure, one year of probation for the swimming and diving program and a $1,250 fine in addition to repayment of unearned wages. We have two compliance officers that work hard to um, provide added education to our coaches, not just in staff meetings every month, but also weekly. Um, there's some things the NCAA will ask of us to put together a more robust schedule of how we're doing that. I think that work's already started from what I can tell. We'll just formalize that and make sure we're following through and, and, and keeping track of it and, and making sure the NCAA knows we're doing our, our due diligence. All right, that's all the time we have for sports. Here is Conrad Sapinski with your full five-day forecast. Conrad? Thank you so much. Our main weather is brought to you by Fire Farms. Fire Farms is Belfast's number one dispensary, offering a great selection of pipes, water pipes, CBD products, and much more. Wow, pretty clear out here in Maine, but down south, a little bit more action going on. We got some rain showers down by Oklahoma. Same story into Texas. Yesterday, the most of the country was very, very quiet. Surprisingly, that doesn't happen that often. And of course, today, different story. Here in our state, though, pretty much the same as yesterday. Just a mixture of some clouds in the area. Sunshine made a return. Temperatures were near average today. We did hit that 40-degree mark. Now, once again, for tomorrow, we're going to be in the clear, so things are going to look pretty good. Up until the evening to overnight hours, looks like more rain will be moving in, and maybe a little moderate to heavy at times as well. you got to go well north of Bangor to tap into some snow. Of course, with those warmer 
current temperatures, that's exactly what we are going to expect. Then, same story on Saturday, we're looking at some possibly snowflakes mixing in with that rain, but here in town, it's mainly going to be a rain event Friday into Saturday. And rainfall-wise, though, we're looking at maybe a quarter of an inch of rain, and then look what happens Monday into Tuesday. Uh, some models are hinting at a strong low pressure system in the area where we might get even an inch and a half of liquid equivalent rain. We'll see how the temperatures are looking because some of this might actually be snow. So we might see some accumulative snowfall on the way Monday into Tuesday. And some models are hinting at a good snowmaker on the way. So, of course, we'll keep an eye on things the next several days and see how it starts to shape up. Now, wind speed wise, though, not bad at all. Yesterday was a bit breezy. Today, only a nine mile an hour breeze in Bar Harbor. Machai is a little bit stronger at 12 miles per hour. Here in town, we're at nine miles an hour. Look up north, though, Millinocket area near zero. So they are pretty calm out there with temperatures in the 30s. Remember those cold, cold temperatures we had just a few days ago all over the country? Well, that is long gone. Now, the warmer air is making its way up north like a Chicago. Back in the 50s today, they just saw snow like 36 hours ago. So, Real big changes are starting to show up all over the country, not only here in Maine. For tonight, though, we're looking at temperatures near freezing and under a partly cloudy sky. Of course, with a light breeze, it's going to feel like we're back in the 20s. For tomorrow, oh boy, look at that. Upper 40s, near 50 degrees outside with some increase in clouds. So maybe near beach weather, right, compared to what we've been having the last few weeks. Our extended forecast outlook does show rain in the area on Saturday, possibly mixing with some snow on Sunday. And then we'll keep an eye on things Monday into Tuesday with that low pressure system in the area. Cooler temperatures as well. So a mixture of rain and snow is possible on Monday. All right, comrade, thank you. And there's more to come after the break. Stay with us. It's Renewal by Anderson's Black Friday event with unprecedented savings on custom-built replacement windows. Our exclusive Fibrex composite material windows won't warp or bow and never need painting, making them vastly superior to vinyl windows. They're custom-built in the USA, installed with precision and care, backed by the nation's best warranty, and now more affordable than ever. Call today. These massive Black Friday savings and special financing end soon. Don't miss out. Call and schedule your free design consultation today. Saving for higher education for my kids is super important to my husband and me because we obviously want to give them opportunities to explore whatever their passion might be. I kind of consider it as a non-negotiable. I have to pay my electric bill, I've got to pay my heat bill, and I'm going to put money aside for my kids' higher education. To learn more about NextGen 529, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the program description at nextgenforme.com. Check if your home state has a 529 plan that offers tax or other benefits. Happy Holidays from Central Maine Denture and Licensed Denturist Patrick Allen, creating smiles with private care and premium service. Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union. Visit us at our Dexter, Guilford, Dover, Foxcroft, Greenville Junction, Brownville, and Canaan locations. Happy Holidays from Leo and Sons Auto Repair, a family-owned business providing fast and dependable auto repair services. Something that shouldn't be so hard, finding matching socks. Something else that shouldn't be so hard, finding and enrolling in a health insurance plan that covers things you actually need. Good thing here in Maine, we have CoverMe.gov. Here you can search health insurance options, choose the plan that works for you, and get financial help to pay premiums. A plan that fits, a price that works. We've got you covered at CoverMe.gov. That's CoverMe.gov. The clock is ticking on the Toyota year-end closeout. Time to get them, time to get them, don't want to miss a thing. Right now, you can get a 2024 Corolla with $1,000 financing cash. Toyota, let's go places. Tonight, the truce to free more Israeli hostages and jailed Palestinians. Where it stands, plus the severe weather and tornadoes. Tracking more extreme weather, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David News.
Welcome back and finally tonight a local chef is heading to the White House. Chef Joe Robbins from Bissell Brothers and Milo was invited to cook for the U.S. Secretary of Interior Deb Holland at the Tribal Nation Summit in Washington, D.C. next week. Robbins is a Penobscot native and one of four indigenous chefs invited to the two day event. He says he's excited for this opportunity. I think we're feeding 450 a day and then like a thousand at night. So uh, it's, it's a big tall task to figure out and a lot of logistics. I mean, most restaurants don't serve that many people a day. So to do it in a place you've never cooked in before and, and we have plenty of time to, to work on it. Sounds very exciting. Well, Chef Robin says he plans to bring a taste of Maine to the nation's capital and is making sure all his ingredients are available before he flies out on Sunday. Yeah, uh, so I'm doing a turkey roulade along with uh, a wild rice salad and apples. Uh, the turkey roulade will be stuffed with cranberries and squash from right here in Maine. Sounds delicious. Well, the Tribal Nation Summit is taking place on December 6th and 7th in Washington, D.C., and sounds like all those members will be well fed. All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us, and have a great rest of your evening.